I am sure most of my viewers are well aware that I enjoy having coffee when I'm out in the woods. And I have experimented and made videos on numerous, numerous ways of making coffee while I am out here. Well, I didn't think there was anything new under the sun, but recently I became aware of a new product that is got to be the simplest way to make an enjoyable cup of coffee, and that is the Jogo coffee straw. If you're interested in hearing more about this product, keep watching. So what is this strange looking device and how is it used for making coffee? Well, in truth, it's not used for making coffee so much as it's used for drinking coffee. This is the brainchild of Joey Jones and Nick Yale, two outdoor educators based in Minnesota, who for years worked to take kids into the backcountry by canoe for outdoor education purposes. Both lovers of coffee, both didn't like the work you had to go through in the backwoods to make a good cup of coffee. So it wasn't until Joey took a motorcycle trip to southern Argentina that he came across something that just spurred his imagination and how it could be used in combination with coffee. And that was a device called the Bombilla. And I'll include a picture on the screen now so you can see what a Bombilla is. And basically it was something that was used in Argentina by the people there for drinking uh, yerba mate, which is a local tea. It is a caffeinated tea and they would just uh, steep it in a gourd and they would use these handmade bombillas for drinking the tea and it would keep the leaves and everything of course out of the straw. And when Joey got home he teamed up with his partner Nick and they got to work on designing this and this is the Jogo which is a straw based on that ancient design of a bombilla, but with modern materials and designed specifically for drinking coffee. So let me give you a very brief description of what this is in terms of its size and weight and that type of thing and construction. So basically seven and three quarters inches long or 198 millimeters weighing one ounce or 28 grams. Doesn't get any simpler than this. Food grade stainless steel tubing with a removable filter on the end that has a micron fine filter. It's not going to show up likely, but very, very fine filter on the end of it. A silicone tip to protect your lips from the heat as well as your teeth from biting onto the hard metal. That's all there is to it. So how is it used? Well, it's got to be the simplest thing possible. Bring your water to appropriate temperature, not quite boiling. Uh, put it in a mug or a cup of some type. Add a couple of tablespoons of coffee. Wait for it to steep for a while. Stick this in and drink. Just that simple. That's how simple it is. So you don't have to make a full pot. You can make as much or as little as you want and use this to drink it with without worrying about all the grounds and the fines in the coffee uh, being in the drink as you consume it. So uh, why don't I just take this down to where I have my stove set up because I'm about to make myself a cup of coffee and I'll show you how it works. All right, I just heated my water up and it's not quite at the boiling point. I'm letting it cool down just a little bit because to, for an ideal cup of coffee, you don't want your water at a hard boil. Well, we don't want ants in our coffee either. Uh, you want it just below the boiling point. So the first thing I want to show you is the, uh, the grind of this coffee. Let's see if I can put a little bit in my hand. And of course, if you're looking to make a good cup of coffee, it's not just the device you're using to make the coffee, it's also both the coffee you're using. And most people will now know I sound like a bit of a broken record on this one, but I'm still using Rampage Coffee. I'm still enjoying this. Made in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, or not made, roasted there, sourced from uh, the best sources around the world. This is the coffee of my choice. Now, I ground this coffee this morning before I came out, so rather than grind it here. I'm hoping that it's going to show up and you can see just how coarse a grind this is. This is considered French press grind. So it's a kind of a coarse grind. A little bit coarser is better in this case than is fine. The coarser it is, the fewer fines or few, uh, less silt you're going to get in your final drink. So I'm going to put in two uh, slightly heaping tablespoons of coffee directly into my mug. And this is looking a little bit like I'm making cowboy coffee. Of course, I'm not boiling it. I'm just adding hot water, again, not boiling. And I've just put in about, what did I put in there? Cup, cup and a half, so maybe 10 ounces of water there. That's it, that's all I have to do. Now, 
Truthfully, I have to wait a few minutes for it to steep. Like tea, like coffee in a French press, four or five minutes is a good amount of time to wait. Now that'll do two things. That'll allow not only for the coffee to be extracted into the water, but as the coffee sits, the grounds will actually settle themselves to the bottom. Now, in fact, I'm gonna give it a little bit of stir using this just to make sure all the coffee has been exposed to all of the water. Now, if I wait four or five minutes, most of the grounds will settle. If I want to hurry that along, you can do the same thing you do with cowboy coffee, which is to pour a little cold milk or cold water on top of it, and that will help settle the grounds as well. And I know everybody has their favorite Wayne's way of making grounds settle. Honestly, time is one of your best ways. Just let it sit. It'll settle on its own, but you can hurry it up a little bit with some cold water or milk. If you're a milk and sugar type of drinker, then wait a few minutes, that four to five minutes, add your milk and sugar to this, stir it around right in with everything else, and you're good to go. So just before uh, I reset the camera up to, to show you how the device is used, I wanted to show you what it came along with. So it arrived in this cotton sack, and in the cotton sack was the instruction manual with all the information. And um, it does show how it comes apart and how the silicone tip comes off. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. I also received a cleaning brush, just a little wire brush that helps to clean it out. I don't find really much gets, if any, gets inside of it, but simple rinse of water most of the time is all that is needed. It's nice to have the brush though, just in case. And if I can get the last item out here, I'll show you what that is. These are replacement silicone tips that were sent to me. So I have four additional silicone tips in this little Ziploc bag, different colors. But uh, you know, over time you want to replace those, especially if they get a tear in them or something, but I, I can, can't see them wearing out any time soon. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes, and when this coffee I feel is at the right temperature, then I'll bring it back and I'll show you how to use the Jogo coffee straw. <laughs> that, that works so well. Okay, a couple things. So here I have my cup of coffee. It's been sitting for a little while. It got to cool down to a drinkable temperature. That's one of the things that people tend to forget about when you make coffee like cowboy coffee. If you use really hot water, you got to wait a while until it comes down to a drinkable temperature. Very important to do that when you're using the Joe Go coffee straw for a couple of reasons. You don't want to burn your lips, and that is possible to do with this straw, especially if you're not using well, when you use it for the first time. Be very cautious. Now the end of the silicone is not is off of the edge of the straw itself and I would recommend that the first time you use this that you grab the whole straw by the silicone and just put your lips over the end of the silicone mouthpiece just until you're used to it and you know how hot it actually will feel. If you grab onto the metal part of the straw itself and your coffee is still hot you'll find it hot on your fingers as well as on your lips. So here's what I've found from experience. This isn't necessary this just seems to work a little bit better and that is if I hold the straw and my cup and I just put it below the surface of the top of the uh, coffee and then sip. Mm. Absolutely clean mouthful of coffee. No fines, no silt, no grounds at all come into my mouth. Now that's more a, a comment on how course you grind the coffee. Even though the course the coffee was ground coarse, there's always some fine stuff left behind. It just you can't get a perfectly even sized grounds unless you spend a lot of money on a grinder. But for the grinder I use at home, I can get a average size is pretty large, but there's still some fine grounds. But that micron filter keeps them out. So even if I dunk this all the way down to the bottom, Again, nothing. No, that, that filter is actually keeping everything out of the coffee. Um, yeah, what a great cup of coffee this is. This is very much like drinking coffee made in a French press because you're making it virtually the same way as far as the coffee extraction methodology is. It's just how it's being filtered that is different. So what I like about it is the fact that you can make a single cup of coffee, or you can make a pot of coffee and just pour as much as you want into your cup and use the straw to drink it. You know, one of the downsides of a French press and a lot of the coffee makers is the cleanup. We don't often talk about that, but cleanup can be a challenge. If you're using a paper filter and a pour over device, 
then it's easy. Pick the filter up, put it in your bag that you plan to take home, and you're good to go. But coffee grounds in a French press can be a bit of a pain to get out. You try to reach down and scoop them out with a long-handled uh, long, uh, spoon or something to get them out uh, so that you can bring them home and compost them at home. Uh, with doing it in a mug like this, it's a lot easier. The cleanup is a lot easier. You still have the grounds to contend with, but it's a lot easier than using a large French press. Yeah, I just, I think I like it for that reason. And look how small it is. This takes up really no room in my pack at all. Now, I used it for making coffee, but you could use it exactly the way the Argentinians did with the yerba mate tea. And that is, I could collect from around the uh, area right here uh, up a number of wild uh, uh, plants for making tea. Like I'm, right now, I'm looking at wintergreen, and over there I know I have some Labrador tea. And down by the shore, I know there's some sweet gale and pine trees all around me, as well as spruce and fir. I can make up a tea, just drop everything into the cup, add the boiling water, wait for it to cool down, use this to drink it, not have to worry about getting pine needles and all that type of thing in my mouth. So it works just as well with tea or loose leaf tea. If that's the way you prefer to drink loose leaf tea as opposed to coffee, again, this works well. And the cleanup is much easier with this. Mm. That's great. Okay, there's just two more things that I want to mention. I put my notes somewhere. I think I left them over there. Okay. Um, Joey from um, Jogo offered me to offer you a 15% discount on the purchase of this device. So I will be providing some information about how you can find it in the video description. He did say that right now they're having a bit of a problem with shipping from the US to Canada. And rather than buy it directly from them, he's recommending that Canadians purchase it on Amazon. So I'll provide you the links. But he does have a code that he's provided me that I'll put in the video description if you would like to purchase one of these for yourself. And the last thing I want to mention is the charity that they have associated themselves with. So 5% of all sales go to a nonprofit uh, organization known as Survival International. And it is set up as a charitable organization to help, help indigenous groups around the world to retain their land, to protect their land, and help them live on the land the way they choose to live. And I think that's very important as well. In fact, I think I may have mentioned in another video a book that I have been reading lately uh, known as Braiding Sweetgrass. And Joey, I'm not sure if you saw read this book, but if you haven't, I think you would definitely appreciate it. But it has come to my attention just how important it is to uh, pay attention to our indigenous peoples and the wisdom they gain through 10,000 years of experience on the way we should be treating this land with respect. We'd be much better off if we did, trust me. I, I believe that with all my heart. Okay, that's my, my little side rant there, uh, and that's all I'll say for that right now. So once again, I'll provide the information of where you can purchase the Joe Go coffee straw in the video description below. Don't forget to take a look at that. And if you're interested, use the discount code. I have no affiliation. I'll get no commission on the if you purchase this thing or not. I just think it's a great little tool to have in your backpack that makes a cup of coffee. And it can't be any simpler than that, to be quite honest. And that makes a good cup of coffee. Of course, it helps that it's Rampage Coffee, but I think any good coffee will work with this and you'll appreciate the difference. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.